VC here, hi guys and gals. Well, <clears throat> I am being late for a while. It's a spooky university number probably 90, I think it is. And the subject is power outages. So what do you do during a power outage? Well, this isn't a real power outage, if you've noticed, because like you might see lights on. My iPhone is, no, that's the iPad, is there because that's on battery. <clears throat> and uh, it's going out. Maybe I better keep it on because it was adding quite a bit of light. Yeah. So what do I do? The, the, the topic was a bit, what do you do during a power outage? Well, you know, strangely enough, <clears throat> we used to live in Canada, in Quebec in particular, which is one of the biggest... Uh, let me see. You know, I was looking. I had something to drink here. Which was one of the... Biggest electricity providers, producers in North America because of all the dams and everything, but also cold weather. And never in my life have we had so many power outages as when we live there. Um, we've been in Switzerland now for over 30 years, and uh, I don't know, we've maybe had two that have lasted, you know. Uh, Maybe the longest one was, I wonder if it was an hour, in all those times, in all those years. And that's it. And uh, probably because most of the power here is nuclear power. I don't know why, but anyway, there's very few power outages here. But what did we used to do when there were power outages? Well, you know something? It was uh, the major ones, so I'm not talking about... You know, the smaller ones. But we've had a few major ones, like, lasted days. And uh, it was kind of like a party-like atmosphere. Now, uh, <clears throat> there were big things, like in Canada, not too long ago in Quebec, where they had ice storms, and it was like weeks, if not a month or something. And my, my parents had generators and so on. But we weren't there. So let's, I'm going to count on the ones, the normal ones. But it, it could be like a few... In certain situations, you know, a few days. Well, my dad was a, you know, a, a very inventive person, but he had always had a, a wood stove, a little wood stove that was there in case. He always had a generator. And, uh, oh, I just lost my, what's going on? All of a sudden I can't see myself anymore. Okay, we'll put it this way. Why did it do that? Oh, I can see why. The iPad is actually giving quite a bit of light here. Um, <clears throat> and we would uh, get together. We would have the less fortunate people didn't have a wood stove or what would come over to our place. And like I say, it would end up with the generator and everything and with the, the, the special lightings and everything. It would be It would be a really cool time. I mean, we would tell stories. We weren't much of a board game family, but we'd play cards and stuff like that a little bit. And But mostly, you know, we'd tell stories. My dad was a very good storyteller. And I don't mean he would, he would not make up stories. He would tell us about the past. And I'm very, very thankful to my dad for those things. I mean, because he would tell us about our ancestors and so on. And there was just so much. So, so basically, it was a lot of family time. Uh, getting together and, I was going to say, huddling in a way and talking about things. And it, it was a good time. So, yeah, that's about it. You know, power outages for me, at least the way I see it, were very positive bonding moments in a way. Uh, when you think about it, I mean, we... Uh, most of us have had power all our lives. I didn't have power when I was a small child, not that I can remember it. But those that didn't have power, they always had power outages. So, I mean, they were always with candles and, you know, getting into particular rooms where the heating was and so on. So I think that for people like my dad and mom that knew those days, it would bring them back to those times, yeah. At least it brought us there, yeah. So that's it. That's my take on power outages. Okay, so DC signing off. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.